back again with Fiona and we're continuing the planets of each ascendant. Uh, we've begun with Scorpio now and we've talked about Mars for a Scorpio ascendant, a very important planet for Scorpio. And now we're going to be considering Jupiter for a Scorpio ascendant. So Jupiter rules over the second and the fifth house for a Scorpio ascendant. This is very telling about Scorpio. Um, Jupiter is exalted in the ninth house and Jupiter is debilitated in the third house. Again, very interesting points to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and begin to find out what Fiona's thoughts are on what does it tell us about how Jupiter works for a Scorpio ascendant due to the fact that it rules the second house and the fifth house for Scorpio. Yes. What are your thoughts there, Fiona? Yes. Well, I think this is, I mean, we had a very positive conversation about Mars being one and six, which I, I agree with wholeheartedly. But if you had any doubts about Mars one and six, then next planets up two and five, Jupiter is just a lovely combination. It's really, you've got your wealth and generation and resources responsibility linked with your legacy, your creativity, um, your children, and grace, you know, it's just a, it's a really uh, very happy combination together, the two and the five. And then that the planet ruling that is uh, benefic and this big, generous, expansive, um, lucky planet. So this is, uh, I think, money in the bank for our Scorpio ascendants. And um, linking these two together naturally leads us to think about things like investment because you're going to have wealth and resources or making money. How do I make my money linked with the fifth house of investment? So is naturally those things want to go together and they've got the, the grace going with them and the generousness of Jupiter. So I think Scorpios can, yeah, really smile about this combination. Right. And, you know, it really speaks to, there's so much to, to think about there. You know, when you talk about the whole idea of research and benefiting from it, you know, that's going to come more into play again also when we consider the fact that Mercury rules over the 8th house, the 8th and the 11th house for uh, a Scorpio ascendant. So this is one of the things that contribute to Scorpio's capacity to do things like have uh, research ability in finance, stock, financial planning. And, good you know, point, I, yes. Yeah, I can think of one of my, uh, one of my good friends who... Uh, he became independently wealthy in his early 40s, uh, who worked as a, a delivery truck driver, but he was so good at investing money, he spent, he, he, he spent all his time teaching himself how to do that. But by the time he was in his mid-40s, um, he didn't have to work anymore yep. because he, he had the mind for it, and he had the luck, and he had the grace for it. So the Scorpios can be very good in that regard. Um, the fact that Jupiter rules the second and the fifth this isn't something that's necessarily always known about Scorpio ascendants, but because they're secretive, um, but sure. oftentimes Scorpio ascendants have a deep attachment to their immediate family and their children. And that's for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you can be attached to your family and your, your children and they just kind of drag you around in their drama. Or you can do it simply because you have a, an unbounded love and sense of joy participating with them given by Jupiter such that one's immediate family can be very supportive. So it, it really depends on what's going on with Jupiter. Yes. Um, and actually the other thing we didn't mention just by these placements is that they're in two beautifully kind of spiritual houses as well. They're in Sagittarius and Pisces. Mm -hmm. um, and the fifth house is the intellect and the second house is the speech. So we're <laughs> going to have this ability to, to speak about philosophical or spiritual matters in a way that you know is very people love to hear or that it, it draws people in or that you know it's expansive it feels like we want to keep going in that direction so uh which is again we didn't necessarily talk too much about the secretive in the one six but perhaps there is like this inner research experience going on for and it's not articulated necessarily by mars but right next door in the second house and the fifth house is this ability to connect with people around this intellectualization of spirituality and philosophy well, what's, what's fascinating about that is that you're you're very 
right on in the fact that Scorpio, Scorpio ascendants have the capacity to think about that, to have an expansive mind, um, to understand philosophy very deeply. But we don't usually always think about Scorpio individuals as being very verbose about it or actually you know, they're not necessarily the ones that are out there you know, talking all the time, uh, giving their lectures and their classes. And we can blame it on Scorpio because it's Scorpio and we say, oh, well, Scorpio is secretive. But again, this is another example of how understanding the rest of the planet shows us how an ascendant works. You know, Jupiter, uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, it's from um, oh, uh, Jaimini Sutras. Uh, when they talk about Scorpio, they refer to him as one who doesn't speak much. <laughs> Uh-huh. So okay. even though there's all this wisdom there, um, Jupiter really doesn't talk a whole lot. Uh-huh. And, and the reason that's the case is because you know, real wisdom is actually silent. <laughs> so true. And so a, it's, it's, it's not that the, there's not that expansive understanding. It's that you can't have expansive understanding so long as you are defining <laughs> things and, you're, and you're, yeah. you're holding things into concepts, which is what words do. So yeah. The Jupiterian mind understands but doesn't say much, number one, because it knows that some things cannot be communicated through words. Um, number two, it, it just doesn't – the talking is not necessarily its, it's, it's obvious function there. So it's, it's not common that you'll find a Scorpio ascendant who does talk a lot even though they do have the capacity to do it, and they will tend to be able to do it when they're with people that they feel very close to, that they feel can actually grasp and sort of resonate with what they, with what they need to share. So that's a very important. I'm, I'm glad you, you brought that up. Yeah. 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 And so now let's move on to this idea of the fact that Jupiter is debilitated in the third house. So that's, you know, it's another one of those interesting dichotomies because Mars is exalted there, but we have the second mm-hmm. board debilitated in the third you know what does that tell you or what are your thoughts on that fiona yeah exactly i don't know what it tells me these are my thoughts um <laughs> i think what it says is that uh it's, it's confusing to hell it's confusing as hell to me so i want someone else to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right great good well let, let's strap in good luck i think yeah. what this is about is um well jupiter is a, a planet of contentment right? That's the type of happiness that Jupiter is about and that that goes so well in Cancer, which has that heart center and that security and safety of of that Cancer energy. So I think that this intellect and the, the, the wisdom, the knowledge that we just talked about is best over there in the ninth house, in this place that's very grounded in emotional safety and contentment, that that's for a balance for the the Scorpio ascendant who perhaps has this secretive or the angst or the, the you know the, the we didn't we didn't talk about them picking 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 but you know right. if they have that actually Jupiter's big bountiful picture that it gives you know it gives so much um, grace and so much support because it's over there in that the, the the ninth house of culture and spirituality but also in the Cancer space of safety and love. Um, and so then I think for me that then, that then contrasts that Jupiter's not going to work so well in the grit and grind of Capricorn, of the rubbing your face in the dirt of what life is about is uh, maybe a bit depressing for Scorpio Ascendant and takes that Jupiter bountifulness like really down. Right. And, and I love that you use the word uh, contentment multiple times there because, you know, when we think about Jupiter, Jupiter is our sense of happiness. And when you take, when you, when, you, when you have to define your happiness, like the third house is a house of thinking and also doing. Mm. You know, remember when we think back to the Rashi's and Signs class from year one of the Astrological Apprenticeship Program, you know, the sign number three, uh, it, it's like flying apart. You, know, you, you have number, house number one, sign number one, which is about, you know, I exist. Sign number two, which is I can provide for myself. Sign three is once we have that sense of safety from sign two, now we can go in all these different directions and explore. Well, when you take a sense of happiness and you define it by the mind and you define it by um, this need to do things and be active, well, essentially what you're doing is throwing apart one's capacity for happiness. 
because then it's required that you're doing things, thinking about things. And we know from, you know, study of, of yoga and meditation, that's not how that works. And that's why contentment is extolled as one of the primary virtues um, to living a liberated or enlightened life. So that's why, just as you said, by taking that Jupiterian energy and giving trust or faith into a philosophy, a religion, a service to a culture, where you don't have to sit there and analyze and overthink things all the time. You just, you, you have what you need to do. You're going to wake up every morning. You're going to meditate. From there, you're going to go do your work as a sense of service. After that, you're going to come home and you're going to attend to your family and you're going to meditate again. You're going to read some scriptures. You're going to read something that's inspirational for you. And you're going to understand that by doing this, this, this helps to keep you in a, in a state of contentment because you're not overdoing it. Um, so I think when we consider this mm. fact that, I mean, Jupiter is debilitated in the third and exalted in the ninth. That's one of the reasons why. But you added that extra layer, which is really helpful of seeing how Capricorn contributes to that by its nature and how Cancer contributes to that by its own nature as well. So it's very good. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the other interesting things, final thoughts about the second and fifth Lord uh, being exalted and debilitated is the idea that when you take the second and fifth word and you debilitate it in the third, that shows the Scorpio ascendant where we start to get this idea of picking coming in and causing difficulty because then they start to overthink and overanalyze their relationship with their family. They start to overthink and overanalyze uh, their, their creative capacity or, or how, how their children are doing in life. And so then family starts to get twisted and warped into a state of unhappiness versus if we have that second and uh, fifth Lord energy with the idea of it being in the ninth of being more open and receptive and trusting and uh, respectful of the choices that our individual family members make. That's where a greater sense of con uh, contentment and peace comes for the Scorpio ascendant, I think. Yeah. So any mm. other final, any other yeah, final thoughts? Yeah, that's a great Scorpio link. Scorpio? No, no, I think that was really good. It's good to see how those exaltation and debilitation points work. Yep. Great. Okay. Good from me. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like we, I feel like we could say so much more about, you know, Jupiter for, for a Scorpio ascendant, but I guess we will honor uh, that energy of Jupiter of, of not saying too much. <laughs> All right. We'll move on to uh, Saturn for a Scorpio ascendant. So thanks again for being here, Fiona. Thanks, Ryan.